Edgeworks Nebula. Hello and welcome to Settle the Stars. Hey folks, this is Lacey Hannon. Previously, we talked about the constellation Sagittarius. This week, we'll look at one of the oldest known constellations, Leo, which becomes easily visible in both the northern and southern hemispheres in March, following Orion the Hunter. We'll explore its main parts, Regulus and Denebola, and how Leo got his name. And we'll discuss the recent discovery of an intriguing new planet among its stars. And how just seconds ago, in cosmological time, Leo the lion lost his tail. Leo is among the easiest constellations to find in the night sky. At its heart, as the Egyptian astronomer Ptolemy put it, is Regulus, which is the 21st brightest star, which is saying something as the stars are innumerable. Four of the lion's stars are in the first or second magnitude. This system, the magnitude system, was introduced in ancient times by Hipparchus. It is an imprecise, unitless measure of brightness of an object. The brighter the star, the smaller the magnitude. Brightness is a function of both a star's distance and its own luminosity. So between these four stars and the fact that Leo is the 12th largest constellation, occupying 947 degrees of space, the big cat stands out distinctly against the darkness of the heavens. To find it, you locate the Big Dipper. In the spring, it stands on its handle, with the outer stars of its ladle pointing at Polaris, the North Star. If you follow those same pointer stars in the opposite direction, tracing your finger across the sky to the bottom of the ladle, you'll discover the nine stars that form the lion. It sits just on the ecliptic, that imaginary line that the sun traces across the sky. Leo rests with his back straight and his head upright. Some observers call his curving head and mane the sickle, because the stars resemble that farm implement. Others refer to the same formation as a backwards question mark, with Regulus as the point at its base. At the opposite end of Leo is Denebola, which forms his backside. Do all these stars really look like a lion? It's amazing how many cultures thought so. The Mesopotamians referred to this or a similar constellation as far back as 4000 BC. The earliest known astronomers, they looked to the heavens for answers to life's questions, believing them to be the home of the gods. The people of Babylon in ancient Mesopotamia built their mythology around what they saw in the skies above, and they were the first to come up with a zodiac, which included the lion. They depicted Leo on stone tables as far back as 1000 BC. They called him Urgula, meaning the great lion, and they called Regulus Lugul, or king. Some astronomers and mythologists believe that the fact that the constellations contain animals like lions and bulls showed that they were created by the people of early Mesopotamia rather than the Egyptians. If they originated in the valley of the Nile, the argument goes, they probably would have included crocodiles, hippos, jackals, and birds, which were the critters that inhabited their world. Regardless, the Egyptians always had a soft spot for the lion because the flooding of the Nile, which provided the irrigation for the crops on which they depended, happened when the sun passed through Leo. The ancient Persians and the Syrians, the Turks, the Indians, and the Peruvians all looked up at the stars around Regulus and saw a cat or a lion there too. The Greeks took the astronomy of the Babylonians and helped shape it into what we know today. For the residents of ancient Athens, Leo was the famous lion of Nemea, a massive mythological beast whose fur was impervious to the weapons of man. The vicious cat was sent by the goddess Hera to torment the people of the region, becoming a scourge. It kidnapped women and took them back to its cave, luring men from town and killing them, until the hero Hercules was dispatched to slay it as the first of his labors. Because the Nemean lion's coat was impenetrable, the only way to subdue it was with a chokehold and Hercules wrestled it to the death. Then he used its own claws to cut off its fur and make it into armor for the remainder of his 12 labors. Some mythologists believe Zeus commemorated Hercules' feet by flinging the lion into the sky. 
Ptolemy included Leo the Lion in his famous second century work, Algamest, which tracked the movement of the planets and the stars and cataloged 48 constellations. The Egyptian astronomer saw the heart of the lion and the stars at the base of the sickle. He called Regulus Basiliscos in Greek or Basiliscus in Latin, both of which mean little king. In Arabia, the star was seen as royal too, referred to as the kingly one. Nicholas Copernicus gave the star its current name, which translates to nobleman in the 16th century. Hey Molly. Hey Max. Have you heard the word? Our podcast is out and it is cooking with gas, baby. Ooh, call me Guy Fieri, cause I am flaming hot. All right, Wait, yeah. what? sure, sure, sure. No, I knew that. I knew that's what you're talking about the whole time, Max. You know what? You're gonna tell us about frogs, planets, even <laughs> vomit. But at the end of every episode, my favorite part is Molly. You come up with a song that helps everyone remember all the facts that we talk about. It's a kid-friendly and adult-friendly, funny, dare we say, educational show. (laughs) New episodes every Thursday, wherever you absorb your podcast. Oh, wait, wait, Molly, Molly, Molly. You forgot to mention our sweet, sweet hotline. Oh, yes, numbers. Here we go. Ready? 760-523-0808. Contact Max and Molly. Regulus, also known as Alpha Leonis, is 79 light years away from Earth. And it isn't actually a single star, but a quartet divided into two pairs, all of which blend together to the naked eye. Regulus is considered a subgiant star that is 75 times the size of our Sun, 150 times brighter, and about twice as hot. Alongside the stars Arcturus and Spica, Regulus forms the Spring Triangle. It's the only first magnitude star to sit on the ecliptic, so planets frequently pass by and the moon visits on a monthly basis, occulting, or hiding, Regulus some years. Leo's brightest star has featured in Star Trek, Babylon 5, and Harry Potter. Regulus Black is the brother of Harry's godfather, Sirius Black. The beta to Regulus's alpha in Leo is Denebola, almost 36 light years away from the Earth. A dwarf main sequence star, it is almost two times the size of the sun, but about 15 times more brilliant. Because of this luminosity, it sits in the pantheon of navigational stars, much like its neighbor, Regulus. There are only 58 of these aids, and they've been helping sailors and explorers find their way for centuries. While Regulus is one of the stars in the Spring Triangle, Denebola provides a point of the great diamond within it making two triangles with Cor Caroli, Arcturus, and Spica. Denebola took its name in 1795. Derived from the Arabic for Tale of the Lion, it shares a similarity to others marking the tales of constellatory animals. Denebola took its name in 1795. Derived from the Arabic for Tale of the Lion, it shares a similarity to others marking the tales of constellatory animals. Deneb provides the backside of Alpha Cygni, the swan. Deneb al Gedi is the tail of Capricornus, the goat, and Deneb al Janudi marks the rear end of Cetus, the sea monster. Today, Denebola designates the end of the constellation, but centuries ago, the lion had a longer tail. Ptolemy and others considered the stars that are now in the faint constellation Coma Berenices, otherwise known as Berenices' hair, part of Leo. But in 1536, the cat's tail was cut off. According to legend, the Egyptian queen Berenice prayed to Aphrodite when her husband, the king, went off to battle. She promised the goddess that she would cut off her long, lovely tresses if he returned to her safely. He did, and she followed through, placing her hair on an altar to Aphrodite. The king was enraged when her curls disappeared from the temple and threatened to kill the priests. An astronomer saved their lives by pointing to the tufts at the end of Leo's tail. There, he said, was the queen's hair, placed into the sky by Aphrodite. The king liked this idea and spared the priests. In 1536, German cartographer Caspar Vopel formally recognized Berenice's hair as its own constellation. 
Between the tail of the cat and its head are five Messier objects, bright galaxies cataloged by 18th century astronomer Charles Messier, one of which has a supermassive black hole at its center. Spinning around several of these galaxies is the Leo ring, a cloud of hydrogen gas that spans about 650 kilo light years. This is dwarfed by the mysterious Hercules Corona Borealis Great Wall, the largest known structure in the universe. Though its very existence is disputed by some astronomers, it stretches for 10 billion light years and reaches out into many constellations. 13 stars in Leo host orbiting planets, and in 2015, researchers working with NASA's Kepler Space Telescope discovered an exoplanet in Leo that could potentially support life. About 111 light years away, the rocky K218b orbits in the habitable zone of a red dwarf star. In 2019, scientists using the Kepler, Hubble, and Spitzer telescopes found water vapor in its atmosphere in two independent studies. The planet is far enough away from its sun for H2O to exist on its surface, and the discovery of atmospheric water vapor was the first of its kind of a planet in the habitable zone. But astronomers were quick to point out that this doesn't necessarily mean K218b is a potential human home because it's unclear whether its atmosphere is otherwise survivable or if it is even solid enough to inhabit. Leo is also famous for its meteor showers, the Leonids, which entertain stargazers in November. Associated with the comet Tempe Tuttle, the Leonids produce meteor storms every 33 years that can feature as many as 1,000 meteors in an hour. In 1966, they came like rain, with thousands of meteors per minute. This year, they will peak on November 17th with an expected rate of 10 to 15 meteors per hour. We hope you get to see the show. And we hope you enjoyed our visit to Leo the Lion. The sky is filled with stories and we're just getting started. There is so much more to explore. Join us again next time on Settle the Stars. Until then, happy terraforming. Settle the Stars is a proud member of the Edgeworks Nebula, a collection of intriguing and informative podcasts from Edgeworks Entertainment. Edgeworks Nebula.